welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Jess and I run a crochet small business called Hook A Duck. So this week we are doing a bit of a market debrief on the market that I did a few weeks ago now. In my previous video, I did the market preparation vlog. So if you haven't checked that out, go and check it out. You will have seen the little montage at the beginning of this video. That was of the market, the market setup. I just filmed a few little bits at the start of the market. First of all, I absolutely loved the market. It was really good fun. It was so nice to meet other sellers. The other sellers were all so lovely. There was this one woman in particular, she was on the stall next to me and she was selling like felt art. So you know when you like sew felt into be like either words that you hang on the wall or like she had some really cool ones that were like for a kid's bedroom, like felt with like an astronaut on and then it would say something cool. And yeah, she was really, really lovely. She was telling me how she used to do this sort of thing and do like markets all the time. She doesn't do it as much anymore. So she was just trying to sort of get rid of the last remaining stock that she has. But she said that she's been doing it for years and she really enjoyed it. It was really nice to meet all the other sellers. There were so many different stalls there. Like there was candle stalls, there was jewelry stalls, there was like bath scent stalls. There was a sweet store, which was a big hit with a lot of the kids and obviously other crafty stalls. Quite a few people had their Christmas stuff out already. Now this market was back in September. Something that I have realized in doing this crocheting and getting the stock ready for the different times of the year is I feel like Halloween has massively been and gone and we're now already at Christmas. <laughs> because in September, I was so focused on Halloween, releasing my Halloween stuff, getting my Halloween stuff ready for that market in September. And now I've I've started on my Christmas stuff. It's the beginning of October. So I feel like it's Christmas, but Halloween hasn't even been yet. You have to just prep so far in advance. And as I say, in September, a lot of people were already doing their Christmas stuff. It is crazy how massively prepared in advance you have to be in order to sell your stuff like quite a long time before the actual time of the year that that is. So that was interesting. First of all, I was shocked at, especially the first few things that sold were some of my bigger things, like the plushies in the hats. The first thing that sold was a duck in a Halloween hat. And I was super shocked because that was my second most expensive item. I think it was 15 pounds. This girl just came up with her mom and she was like, I really like that. And then yeah, the mum was just like, pick which one you want. And she picked it and they bought it. And I was really shocked because yeah, I thought it was gonna be the smaller, cheaper ones that were gonna go more. So that was a, a more expensive one that went like pretty quick. So I was very pleasantly surprised at that, which was good. And it also told me, cause a lot of people were very interested in the Halloween-y stuff. People do love things for an occasion and especially adults, because what I found is a lot of adults were coming by. They were massively complimenting me, which is lovely. Saying like, oh, I love it. It's really, really lovely, but I don't have any kids to buy it for. So obviously the big market for my brand is kids. Cause it is very cute and like cute little plushies, you know, but obviously adults will buy it either if it's for buying for someone else, so if they have any kids in their family, or they'll buy it if it's an occasion thing. Because you know, something like the Halloween one, you can get that as like a Halloween ornament. So say with Christmas, I'm full on gonna be going in on Christmas decorations, so ones that you can hang on the tree, and also obviously the plushies in the hats, because you can just have that as like an ornament, so adults will wanna buy it. Because I don't know if adults feel a bit like some of them were a bit embarrassed to just like buy like what essentially is like a cuddly toy. But I mean, I'm not, I buy cuddly toys all the time, but maybe some adults are, but they feel they can justify it if it's buying it for someone else. So that really told me, yeah, lean into the occasion things. I'm definitely gonna do more birthday ones. You know, I was saying about doing the little birthday hat because people have always got a birthday coming up. So, you know, if people see it and they like it, they'll think, oh, I can get that for so-and-so's birthday. Because another shocking one was the wedding duck. So they had a lot of interest. We actually sold 
the wedding ducks it was to the lady on the stool next to me so that was lovely because everyone's obviously very supportive of each other's stalls she bought the wedding ducks which was my most expensive item at 25 pounds so what we were so shocked that they sold because she had a wedding coming up but obviously a lot of people came round and they looked at the wedding ducks and they were like, oh yeah, because I've got a wedding coming up. Because people often have a wedding coming up that they're going to, don't they? That is quite a nice wedding present idea, I think. Something a bit different. We quickly made up another bride and groom duck because there was this woman that had come round, looked at the bride and groom duck, then she went away. Then we sold them to the other lady and then the original woman came back and she seemed a bit disappointed that they'd sold. So we quickly got more set up and put out for people to at least see you know even if they weren't going to buy them they can see and know that we do them so then if they have any weddings coming up they can come back to us obviously we gave out a lot of our business cards so hopefully some people might remember us and especially yeah that we do the occasion things and then they might come back when they have an occasion coming up the other thing we were thinking is the mini ones we're going to make them key rings so just put little key rings on so like the little turtles and the mini ducks and the mini whales we're going to make them all key rings because once again an adult will buy a key ring but they might feel embarrassed to buy a cuddly toy do you know what i mean like a lot of adults have especially like bulky key rings on their car keys house keys and everything i have a very bulky key ring on my set of keys that will make a lot more adults buy it. key rings yeah because it gives it a purpose doesn't it which i think a lot of a lot of people that aren't kids might want something that has, you know, a bit of a purpose to it. <laughs> so they don't feel like they're just buying a cuddly. A kid would enter, me and Mike would be like, this could be promising. And they'd come, you know, fall in love with it. And then the parent would come by and would like buy it for the kid. So obviously if we can get it into any places like village days, school fairs, that sort of thing, where there would be a lot of kids, that would be ideal sort of settings for it as well. We did sell a few more just of the like normal ones a few normal whales normal ducks then another thing which we realized because obviously a big thing that we were kind of testing out was the price so i think the prices were fine nobody sort of said like oh that's too expensive one thing that we did notice is that i obviously went around and did a scout around of everyone else's stalls and like how much they were selling things for and it seemed fine mine seemed fine like on the right sort of level with everyone's however there was this one stall and it was right as you came in and it had these gorgeous crocheted snowmen that were quite big they were like bigger than any of my plushies and they had a gorgeous hat on gorgeous scarf and i was like well they obviously would take a long time to do i had a sneaky look at the price and it was literally i can't remember exactly but it was definitely five pounds or less and I was like, that is ridiculous. Like for the amount of time it would take you to do that, five pounds is not enough at all. I went back to the store and was saying to Mike about this, that makes mine look ridiculously expensive now. But we realized they were a charity stall. So obviously amazing that charities are there at these fairs. But obviously those snowmen have probably just been donated to them. So they haven't actually made the snowmen which is great but that's obviously why they can afford to sell them so cheaply because it's not like they're trying to make a profit from things that they've made so that then made sense and i then was like okay i don't feel like we're massively overpriced now because it's obvious that i've actually made all this stock and as i say people didn't seem to think it was too expensive but now i know you know the charity stalls obviously run off of donations and all the money they make is for charities with the jewelry like she was selling her jewelry her necklaces for like you know 20 pound for a necklace or something so i was like yeah i feel like we're we're priced about right then there was this other stall that was selling these gorgeous bears brocheted like bears and stuff and they didn't even have prices on so you know when things don't have prices on it's because they're very expensive usually so that made me feel a lot better and they literally sold, I think they literally sold like one bear throughout the whole thing. But I'm guessing it's probably because each bear would be like 50 or 60 quid probably. Because they were quite big bears and they were all like handmade. And I was like, well, fair enough. You only need to sell one, don't you? And you've 
made a profit. I feel like it was priced about right, but I do think for the next market, I think I am gonna bring it down a little bit just because I think hopefully with Christmas markets, which is the next ones we're doing, hopefully there'll be a lot more people there, it'll be a lot more buzzing and popular. As I say, there's Christmas decorations there, so hopefully people will wanna wanna buy them more. And sometimes, you know, a little kid would come up with like a fiver. Like I think sometimes parents like give the kid like a little five pound to spend or something. So I think rounding it down to five pound for the mini ones, cause they were 6.99, I think. I think I'm just gonna make them five pounds and make the bigger ones, you know, like the ducks and the whales in the Christmas hats. I'm gonna make them 10 pounds and like the snowmen and and see how that goes basically i've actually booked we've got four christmas markets coming up possibly six so yeah i'm gonna you know see how the first few ones go with the price wise and then see if we need to adjust from there but i think i'm gonna bring the prices down just a little bit i just think fiver is quite a nice round number for a little key ring we really enjoyed the market so we were there for four hours it actually went very quickly we took some food with us had a little like snack break in the middle my dad came along first of all and then he like went and had a little coffee in the coffee shop like bit and then was walking all around and he loved it and then my mum and my granddad and my brother appeared as well and they seemed to really enjoy it. It was really good and there was like a steady flow of people throughout the whole thing. This one was very much like a village, you know, in the village hall, like a craft fair. So it was a lot of obviously the local residents and things, but a lot of people did show up, which was good. We've got ones coming up. I've got one like in a garden center and it's their like Christmas event. So I'm hoping ones like that, probably a lot more people will come, hopefully a lot more like kids and stuff. We did sell a good amount. So we made 70 pounds, which I'm really pleased with. For our first market, I think that was really good. Four hours we were there and we made 70 pounds. So I'm very pleased with that. First we were sat there, we didn't sell our first thing for probably about maybe half an hour in, 45 minutes in. And I was kind of thinking like, oh, I have a feeling we're not really gonna sell anything. But then, you know, the first girl came up, she got that duck in the witch's hat, and then it just started rolling from there. Oh, we sold quite a few pumpkins as well, which was great. It was really, really good. And it definitely helped me see the, the areas that need to be tweaked, need to be changed, what we can do to improve that. And yeah, it was just good to, experience a market, experience other sellers, see the sort of things that they're selling. It was cool to be behind the scenes of a market because me and Mike often love just going to markets and wandering around and seeing all the different stores. We actually went to one last weekend and I was like, oh, it's really cool now being, you know, a customer when I've experienced being a seller. We really enjoyed the experience and we're very looking forward to the next one. Also, I remembered something else I wanted to talk about. So the market prep process, I really enjoyed the process. It was really good fun. It was great sort of thinking about how I'm gonna set up my stall, how I'm gonna display it, what I need to buy in order to present and run my own stall. But obviously this process was a lot harder and there was a lot more to do than what it will be going forwards. Because going forwards, obviously now, I've got everything that I need for the markets in terms of like payment, displaying my signs, you know, making my signs, making my labels. Obviously I'll just have to print out more of them and put them on each, each time I do more stock, but things like that, it's all set up now. So that initial going out cost of buying all that stuff for the setup is done. And also the initial pile of stock, because I've now got a lot obviously still left over from that market. So going into my next market, I already have a lot of stuff made up. So that's quite nice. Now there's, there's not a level of stress that I don't have anything. I've experienced a market, I know what it's like. So going forward, it should be much easier from now. The last one, it was a little bit sort of last minute that I signed up to the market. I realise now that people sign up months and months in advance. You know, I see people's YouTube videos and they're like, let's market prep for a market in like three months time. And I'm like, yeah, you do quite often need a lot of time. And another thing I've realised is people that I'm reaching out to for all these markets now, they often have lists that they send out in like January and they're for the whole year. Like one of them, they do like four different markets throughout the year and you literally sign up for them all in January. So you'll know 
sort of what your year is going to look like and then you can start prepping obviously much earlier. As I sort of came into the market world near the end of the year, when markets are very busy, especially with like Christmas markets, was a bit of a rush for that first market. It was full on, it was a bit stressful, <laughs> just trying to get enough like stock made up. I really enjoyed the process, I learned a lot and yeah, it's made me want to do many more markets. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, please like and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you next week for another video. Bye guys!